How's it going? It's uh, day three of creating uh, my iPhone game with Cocos 2D and Box 2D. Um, so, so far what we've done is we put the animated sprite on the screen, did a basic tile map, um, which will be changed out later, and added a joypad to move him, to move the uh, character around. So in day two I had him moving with the joypad left and right. What I wanted to do was implement a jump. So I spent some time and I, uh, I created a button, which then if you tap it he would jump, and that just wasn't working out too good. Then I went back and I thought of... Uh, about um, the way that I wanted to build this game. So I want it to be uh, a game called Conquer Mars, so he's going to be on the planet Mars. So I thought he's probably going to be a astronaut of some sort, and uh, why not utilize Box 2D uh, using the gravity and uh, creating the world and give him some velocity and he can actually float around. So instead of having a jump button, the joypad now controls him uh, with a jetpack that just floats him around the screen. So that's what I spent most of the time doing, implementing some box 2D stuff, creating a world within my uh, scene. And uh, I'll show you what I've got so far. So we might as well go ahead and build it. And uh, we'll see what we have here. Okay. So same as before, joypad, basic background taken from the, uh, the test files of Coco 2D. A sprite I got from that tutorial. And before, when I moved my joypad left and right, you would just run left and right across the screen. So he's sitting here right now. So now when I do it, um, he takes off, he moves, takes off, floats around the screen. And he falls down, I can get him to come back up. So this needs a little bit of tinkering, but I got it to work so far. He can float at his level and go up, uh, come back down, go up higher. So I have it moving really slow right now. I had it a little bit faster before, but um, I figured my guy is actually quite large, and uh, the tile map won't look like this. So when the actual game comes uh, to take shape, it's going to be a much smaller guy, so I don't want him flying over to the other side of the screen really fast. I want him to be gradual, so the player can actually gradually move. It might move a bit faster than this, but uh, see this is actually moving quite slow. I can beef that up a little bit. I can show you how I did it. So there's probably a lot better way of doing this. Um, once again, not too many tutorials out there for doing that. There's a ton on creating a bouncing ball that continually bounces all over the screen. But not too much on uh, what I'm trying to do. Uh, perhaps there is for creating Box 2D and Flash. But this isn't Flash, so it's done a little bit differently. Anyways, going through here, same file. Um, what has changed here though is I, I added the sprite up in this section here in a B2 body because I'm going to create a body for the sprite which is what you have to do in Box2D so it's just add player and uh, I go through exact same code as before I add them until I get to this portion here this is where I create a player body which Box2D uses for um, all its calculations and, and placing it in the world and stuff so all I did was just box 2D body definition, um, the type, and then position. So right here I just positioned them based on player location, which was up here, player, player location, right there. And uh, right now it just sticks them in this location right here, but he will fall based on gravity to the ground. So it doesn't really matter about that location. But anyways, I, I create a box, uh, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm creating this body here and then uh, linear velocity I set to zero user data is player and one thing you'll notice is I have to divide any coordinate I have within Cocos 2D by a ratio and that ratio is set up here so what's happening is typically box 2D and all other iPhone applications use pixels and box 2D uses uh, measurements of meters and it goes I think it goes from negative 1 to 10 meters, I think that's what they use. So anyways, we got to uh, convert our pixels over to meters, so Box2D knows what we're talking about. So that's why whenever we enter in a coordinate based on Coco's 2D, I have to divide it by the ratio. Um, so we went through that, and then what I want to do is create a shape definition for him. So typically in the tutorials, they like to use circles because they like to use balls a lot. So um, what we're going to do is uh, use a square 
to represent our figure. Uh, so all I did was take the size of the PNG for the uh, figure, which is 133 by 150, and this is hard coded in, and hard coded in now, so I might want to change that to be uh, a variable so I can change the RAM. Um, so I just take that and divide it by the ratio, it gives me my box size, and then I add the box. I create a, a fixture definition, which is the player shape definition, and I add the box to that for the shape. I give it a density which is uh, uh, affects gravity and all other forces you apply to it. I have friction on that object, which is one in this case. So when he is going along the ground, he's not sliding like ice. So if I stop moving my joy pad, set him continually moving like he's on ice, I would, uh, uh, I would have him just stop. And then uh, restitution, I have how fast uh, that comes to rest. So this shape. Uh, and then I just add that to my body, so create fixture, player uh, shape def, my body is up here, body, so I just added that shape to the body, and now um, my sprite has a way for Box2D to recognize it and act upon it, okay, and then I just return the body. So that's adding the sprites, then I just get down to uh, initiate all the same, except for here I define gravity as uh, negative 10, so it's always uh, pu pulling them down to the bottom. Um, sleep is an important thing because with physics it's constantly calculating things for gravity, velocity, when it hits something else, and reactions, and all these other calculations. So if something stops moving and just is sitting on the screen, I don't want to be calculating things based on it. So what I do is I put it to sleep. So um, I'm allowing it to sleep, so I'm saying uh, do sleep is true. Then I create a world, which is the actual uh, place that the all the objects are going to be within. So the world is a new B2 world. It has gravity and it does sleep. Uh, continuous physics is going to be true. Um, let me just check this phone here in a second. Alright, sorry about that. Uh, so we created the world. And then once we create the world, what we want to do is define um, the ground. So what we're doing here is just B2 body. I, call, I make a new B2 body called ground body. Um, so that's the same thing that we did for the player. We created a B2 body. In this case, it's going to be for the ground. So I create um, a polygon shape, a ground box, and I give it a bottom, top, left, and right. So that surrounds the screen. So the bottom of the screen is here. I create that. And move around my screen. So in the future I might not have the left and right or even I might not have the top so I might have it so um, he doesn't bounce off those areas but I'm not too sure how I'm going to do that quite yet. And then finally I just add the player so moving player self add player which is the method above for adding the player give it a position and then what I do is um, call out the scheduler and then the rest of this here is the same, so that's the tile and the, and the uh, joy pad. And then the scheduler here is the tick, so based on CC time. And how I'm moving it with the, um, with the joy pad is using an X velocity. And I just have a uh, moving player, which is I called it earlier, set linear velocity, and I set that up. All right? So, and then this is just a method we add just to check, um, box two checks for all the different sprites and and bodies in the scene. That's about it. Everything else is the same. Alright, so uh, we'll talk to you on uh, day four. And um, if you have any comments or questions, please uh, let me know. Okay, talk to you later.